All right, guys, let's get back into this thing. Um, where we left off is the engine's all put together. We rotated around. Everything looks good. Um, I'm not going to use the tank. I just put that on there because I needed to get something over there. Get it out of the way. I plugged all the um, state of wires back in. The pulse generator and all that. Um, these are still loose up here. So what I want to do now is I want to fill this with motor oil. And hook a battery up to it. And then I want to crank it over to make sure we got oil going to the top of the engine. So let's do that now. All right, I think this thing takes about a quart. So I picked up some uh, motorcycle. It's excellent for wet clutches. Uh, w 10W40. Uh, so let's throw this quart in there. I think it only takes a quart. We'll see. All right, I got the quart in, and as you can see, not showing up on the stick. So let's add more. All right, let's check it now. And we're right in the middle. This is a thirsty engine. It took almost two quarts. I'm pretty sure that uh, once I run this for a little bit, oil gets in all the passages, it's probably gonna take all of two quarts. Uh, I got about, probably took maybe one and three quarter quarts right now. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the spark plug out because I don't really wanna fight compression while I'm cranking this thing over. And then we'll see what we have for oil feed to the top of the motor. And hopefully we're in good shape and then we'll check the spark again to make sure that we have spark because they did take the stator out. Okay, so I got my test battery hooked up. Um, I got it power in, power, uh, grounds are hooked up properly. This ground here goes all the way down to the frame over here. Um, power leads in. Now I had the ground on and when I touched off the power terminal, it was sparking. The key is not on, so it's a draw somewhere. I don't know if the wires were hooked up properly here. So I unplugged them all, touched again, no draw. This is fine because I can just touch these two off right here, get this thing to start. But I think what I might try to do is I might try to just ground, put a ground from the battery and just touch off here until I can get something. See if I can get this started a click. Um, see if this relay is any good. Uh, so let me try that now, I'll put you guys in a stand. All right, so one thing I do know for sure is that these are ground-based switches and they're ground-based for a reason so that if they ever rock out, you don't have an electrical fire. So. It's sort of a safety precaution. You can see things get wet all the time and um, they're vibrating and, and, and you run a really high risk of chafing wires. So that's why they do ground-based switches. So it's basically for safety. Anyway, um, I'm gonna tap off in here and see if I can hear this thing click. All right, so something's not right here. The start is why am I getting power through this? I don't know if you guys can see the sparks, but that's not good. I shouldn't. I'm starting to think this isn't the right solenoid. And the reason why I say that is because I shouldn't have power on the motor side. Not a cross like that. Unless this isn't clicking. I wonder what happens if I put power to that. Maybe it's, I don't think this is right. Let's see. So you won't get any sparking now. Alligator clips are in rough shape. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not understanding this. Let me look into this a little more. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to jump this and we are going to see if we get any uh, oil to the top of the motor. So let's do that now. Spock, I don't need Spock to test that. All right, guys, the battery is a little on the weak side, so we're going to give it a little bit more juice here. And let's see if we get anything up top here. Very fast. 
So you can't see him anymore. Let's let it sit for a minute. I don't want to overheat the starter. We'll let it sit for a minute and uh, I'll try cranking it again and see if we can get uh, oil to the top. Yeah, I've been cranking it over. I don't know if I have enough uh, RPM to actually prime all the uh, oil cavities in here. So I'm going to put oil, squirt some oil down on the cam, down around this stuff, put the caps on, and we're going to attempt to start it anyway. Um, let's just check the oil level, see if the oil level went down. Why don't we do that? Now that I've been cranking it, maybe it did go down. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, it went down. I gotta put more oil in it. It definitely went down, so it is pumping. All right, I fiddled around with this for a while. Um, this is a ground wire that doesn't plug into there. I don't really know what this goes to. I'm gonna have to look into it. Um, but it's definitely a ground wire. This wire here needs to have positive. This one, who knows, <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, I got spark and uh, it's a mess here. I'm gonna have to go through this later. I'll go over it more in depth when we start fixing all the switches and buttons and everything. And the solenoid is no good anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't work, so I have to get a new solenoid. So um, anyone who's interested on the electrical on this, more to come. Uh, I just want to kind of start it now and um, see where we're at. Oh, one goes to the CDI, the other one goes to the ignition. That's right. So this powers, this gives power to the CDI, basically, is what these two are, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, and when you turn the key on, turn the key on here keys on you can see up here that we have power because the neutral lights on you guys can see that neutral lights on so we do have power um, I think at this point we got to straighten away the carburetor um, I got a carburetor it's in pieces it came off of that grizzly right there basically they're the same exact carburetor um, same exact engine too I think but uh, let's get to that all right let's take a look at this carburetor uh, this is one I had laying around, and I have some some parts for it. Um, I'm missing a screw. Hopefully, I can find one somewhere. I think there's a screw in here. Maybe. Yeah, there's a couple of screws in there, so let's dump this stuff out. Yeah, we got a couple of screws, so should be good. All right. Uh, let's pull the bowl off, see what it looks like. And I've had this pot before. I couldn't get it to run right, so I just bought a new one because it was a Chinese cob anyway. And a new one, I think, was like 35 bucks or something. So rather than fool around with it, I just bought a new one. But let's see if we can fix it this time around because I don't have a cob for this bike. And this is the cob for it. It's pretty clean inside. Not dirty or anything, but I think I did clean it. Uh, let's pull the floats out. Let's just make sure nothing's missing. All right, I can already see that we are missing, we're missing a jet that goes in here. That's the idle jet, and the idle jet is missing. Going to be pretty hard to start without an idle jet. <laughs> Not this screws for. Let's pull this one off. See. Not really sure what that is. A little bit of corrosion. Let's pull this out. I don't know what it's set at. Doesn't matter. We're gonna reset everything anyway. Oh, 
not plugged. This jet looks brand new, so I must have put this in here trying to, trying to get it to work. Emulsion tool looks pretty good. Don't seem to have another one in this kit, so we'll probably have to use it. The O-ring has seen better days. I don't think I have an O-ring for it here. It might in another kit. This is the accelerator pump. And it is very pliable. So there is nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Very good shape. Pull the top off. Check out the diaphragm on this. Once again, very, very pliable. What is that in there? Huh. That's interesting. Very pliable, good shit. A little bit dirty in there. Not too bad though. All right, I don't see anything wrong with this. All right. Now, let's just pop the emulsion, this other tube out, see what that looks like. That's the other tube. <laughs> looks pretty good. I think that's it. I don't think that goes in there. I don't think I've ever seen a bronze washer inside of there. Something's not right with what holds the jet in. Uh, if you look here, this is what it's supposed to look like. I don't know why this washer was in there. That should not have been in there. <laughs> well, things you find. All right, so the needle has a spring on it. All right, so I don't think that this is put together properly because it just don't look right. It does not look right. That is number four. Number four is a needle holder. Number four is a needle holder needle set. So I don't think that this needle is right. I don't think the way it's set up is correct. They say the pilot jet on this should be 25. Um, we got that pipe on there, so I'm gonna put a 27 and a half in there. All right, guys, I've been playing around with this thing and I have it set up the way it's supposed to be. And it seems to be staying in there, it snapped. That plastic piece snapped in there. So I think we're okay there. Um, I had to take a few pieces out of my uh, other assortment of rebuild kits, washes and such to get this thing fixed. Um, somebody took this thing apart and then put it back together, right? All right, I think we're good. Let's try it. I, I don't know even know. I don't know if this carburetor is going to work or not. And it kind of stinks because uh, it's going to be a 
it's a rebuild with a fresh start and all that and oh, I don't know we'll play it by ear I guess also another thing I want to show you guys let me pull that out of there right here that hole see it it goes clear through to inside of here which I'll show you you guys can see that down inside of there according to the assembly drawing there is supposed to be an air jet in there it's not threaded or anything so <laughs> I don't know we'll try it if it doesn't work I'll have to buy a new cob all right let's put this back together all right, I guess that's everything all right, back at the bike let's try popping this thing on and I'm gonna be honest I really don't I'm not a hundred percent sure that this thing's gonna work okay I got the throttle cable hooked up in here with the pin and everything and there's nothing happening here as you can see so gotta take this apart and see what's going on in there now right, let's take a look in here and you can see the cable's not on oh let me pop that on so i had to bring this out quite a bit this nut here was all the way out to there and it was all the way in and there was a lot of free play in it that's not too bad right there We'll start, we'll start with that. I'll leave the cover off because I may need to adjust it. Okay, I'm gonna pop this on now. All right guys, let's give this thing a shot. I got a temporary line on here, the carburetor's mounted. Um, I had a little bit of issues with the clamp. I need to get new clamps. Let's fill the bowl and see if we, uh, any leaks. I'm not giving this carburetor much hope, but I was just hoping that maybe it would work. that bowl holds a lot of yeah so I don't know hasn't stopped yet oh, there it goes all right gas is holding right there you guys can see that all right let's uh grab a fire extinguisher just in case <laughs> I guess that's it. Let's give it a crank. See what happens. Turn the key on. And like I said, I got to crank it by hand. So let's see what happens. She ain't cranking over too good. I got a feeling the wiring on this is not up to snuff. I might have to rewire it. She's not cranking fast enough. Kind of upsetting. All right, let me uh, charge the battery a little more. Oh, let's give it another try. No. Try choking it. Let me get the charge a full blast. Let me pull the plug out and see what's going on. Well, oh, guys, I'm trying to take a compression test on this to see if there's weight, like if there's too much compression and this thing will crank over. I don't know. Uh, let's try it again. I'll put the full juice to it. Let's try it one more time. Take a look. I don't know why it says we're only at 90 PSI. Yeah. 
Almost 100. No, it's at 100. I mean, the ring's on. Obviously, the ring's not seated yet, but that's not too much compression. So I don't know why this thing's struggling to turn over. Um, that fired over pretty fast. I came over here and uh, put a socket on the uh, crank bolt here, and it, it turns over freely. It's not, it's not turning over difficult. I'm wondering if the start is no good. Well, the start is on its way out because that one-way clutch was uh, jammed. And I'm wondering if this thing's burnt up because it was probably spinning because it wasn't disengaging. So the start is probably no good in this. Um, let's try to start it one more time. All right, turn the key on. Uh, all right, give it max juice and see what happens. See if she fires over. sense at all doesn't seem like that start is any good all right it doesn't look like we're gonna start it today I don't have a starter for this and uh, looks like I'm gonna have to buy one but that's got to be what it is got to be what it is I'll show you guys real quick let me shut this off okay I mean, this is not difficult to turn over at all. Not difficult at all. I mean, when it hits a compression strip, it gets a bit tight, but they all do. So I'm thinking the starter is no good because I'm literally going directly to the starter right now and I'm bypassing all the wires altogether and I'm hitting right at the starter and it just doesn't seem to have enough oomph to crank this thing over. So I'm assuming the starter is no good. So it looks like we're gonna have to order a new one. Well guys, uh, I got the starter up, it's on the bench over there. Um, pretty easy to take out, two bolts. Um, it's really nothing in the way. Probably one of the easiest things I've ever taken the starter out of. You can see right there, just comes right out. Two bolts, take the power line off, and that's it. Um, I don't know if it's a common problem with these motors, but my Grizzly over there did the same thing. Cranked really, really slow, like the battery wasn't, like the battery was weak. And uh, I know the battery wasn't weak in that because I put a new battery in it and it would crank really, really slow and then it wouldn't start. And then I have to put a jump on it and play with it. And then eventually it would start. And then um, basically I put a new starter in it and it fires up every time now. And it turns over really fast where before it was turning over super slow. So I'm assuming it's the same deal with this because they're pretty much the same engine. And um, yeah, so we got to order a starter. I need to get a relay also because the relay doesn't work. I have two or three relays around here. I tried all of the ones I have. None of them work. I think they're all bad anyway, but anyway, <laughs> so be it. So I need to get that relay. Um, the carburetor is leaking out of this seal right here. Honestly, I can buy a brand new one of these for 35 bucks. A rebuild kit's probably going to be 20, 25. I'm just going to buy a new carburetor because they're not 100% happy with this thing. Um, the needle isn't staying in there. Um, I think the person that had uh, the eight, the Grizzly before me tried to clean the carburetor and he did some damage to it. Um, I'm not 100%. I'll use it for pots. It's good for pots. There's plenty of good stuff on it. Um, I think I'm going to order a new carb as well. So I'm going to get a carb. I need to get clamps. Um, I don't have the intake boot that goes to the intake box. Um, unfortunately, that's gone too. So I have to order that. Uh, what else do I need? Looking around here. Um, I still need to get AM bushings. I need a chain of sprockets. I need rear brakes and a disc. Um, yeah, so that's just a start. <laughs> this thing's looking like a money pit. Anyway, um, I put paper towel underneath here. Now that I filled it with oil, I want to see if we have any leaks. Uh, I'll let this sit under here for a while. A few days, that should do it. Let's see if we have any drips. I'm not anticipating any, but you never know. Um... But I think that's pretty much it for now. So, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, it's Friday. I got a lot of stuff. It ain't going to be here until the middle of next week. I don't really want to do anything else to this until I get this engine running. Um, so I'm going to set it aside. 
And we're gonna have a short video this week, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, I wanted to get it running, but the starter is not cooperating. Um, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. The crank is fine, the piston's fine, everything's fine. I got it to crank fast enough to get 110 PSI out of uh, the uh, compression compression check that we just did. And compression's fine. Once the ring seat, it'll probably go up to 130. Uh, you know, we get some oil in the pool. I don't really know if there's any oil in there. Um, that's probably why I couldn't get oil to go to the top of the engine because it's just not cranking fast enough for the pump to actually force the oil up there. Um, so we got to get a new starter and that's about all we can do. So at this point, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, liking, all that stuff. Don't forget about the uh, record games out in Utah at Sand Hollow State Park or National Park or whatever one it is. And um, I'm going to be heading out there. It's only a few weeks away. And hopefully some of you guys are out there. I mean, you may not be out there to see me, but if you see me, say hello. Um, and I'll give you a sticker. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. And we will definitely have it running. And again, I apologize, but it is what it is.